and welcome to the Chief Architect webinar here on stairs for L-shaped, U-shaped, winder stairs, and multiple stair segments. My name is Kelly. I'm one of the certified trainers here at Chief Architect. And joining me today are several Chief Architect staff uh, along in the audience here. So during the presentation, if you have questions, you're welcome to answer them using the questions panel in the GoToWebinar interface there. And they'll be happy to answer those questions for you. You can kind of type them in and they'll be answering questions throughout the presentation. If you have a question that you would like to answer live, um, after the presentation is over, we will be opening for, up for a live Q&A session. In that time, you can raise your hand using the GoToWebinar interface there, and then one of my assistants, Carrie, will call on you, and you can unmute yourself and ask that question. Just as a heads up to let you know, we are recording this session, uh, and we will be emailing those out to you uh, in a couple of days after this is done here, so you can have those recordings to review at a later time if you so desire. So with all of those announcements out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get started. There are lots of different ways to make multi-level staircases in Chief Architect. I'm going to go over a couple of different examples today so that you can know how to use these in your projects going forward. The first and most important tool in this is the Draw Stairs tool. This tool allows me to draw a set of stairs however I want. And what I mean by that is I'm going to simply click and drag with my mouse, and I'm going to get a set of stairs that has a certain amount of stair treads that's as long as I want it to be. And I'll simply go ahead and release my mouse there, and now I have my stairs drawn. One of the things to know about drawing stairs with this tool is that you always start at the bottom tread and work your way up. So what I mean by that is when I'm clicking and dragging, if I start on this side and click and drag this way, when I release my mouse, notice that the bottom tread is here on the left and the top tread is here on the right. The same is true when you're working with stairs between floors. You always want to draw stairs from the lower floor up to the upper floor. So if I'm drawing stairs from my first floor to my second floor or from my foundation to my first floor, I always want to draw from the, from the floor below up to the floor above. Now, if I want to take and make a set of L-shaped stairs, I'm going to go ahead and delete these stairs here. What I'm going to do is with my first set of stairs drawn here, I'm then going to draw a second set of stairs. Now, I want to draw these stairs right as a 90 degree from this set of stairs. But if I put my mouse right here and click and drag, notice what happens. Chief put the stairs quite literally right next to each other and the middle of this stair is right on these stairs. So they're not in the right position. Now what happened here is Chief Architect went and drew the middle of this staircase where my mouse was. So the thing I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and delete these here, is I want to take my mouse and I'm going to set it right on this corner here. And you'll see that I've got these snap indicators that show up here. These indicators tell me that my mouse is snapped on the lower left corner of these stairs. Now what I can do with this is I'm going to take my mouse and I'm simply going to move it to the left a little bit. And you'll notice I have these two squares that show up here, these two circles that show up here, that show that my mouse is in line with those. Those are my orthogonal snap indicators saying that my mouse is in line with that original starting point. Then what I can do is I can simply click and drag with my mouse to establish a second set of stairs. Now I got these stairs a little far away from each other. I want these corners to be right next to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this set of stairs and I'm going to use my point to point move tool to move this corner to match this corner here. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the point to point move tool and I'm going to first click on the corner that I want to move or the spot on the stairs where I know where I want it to end up. So I've got first click on these uh, corner of the stairs that I want to move, and then I'm going to click on where I want that stair to end up, or where I want that point to end up. In this case, I want it right here on this corner, so I'll go ahead and click, and now I have my stairs in perfect position. Now that I've got my stairs positioned properly, I can simply take my mouse and click right where the landing would be, and I now have a landing there. You notice in my 3D view that my stairs are connected, there's a landing right here, and then the stairs continue on up from there. Now, if I open these stairs for specification, you'll notice I have this staircase information up here at the top. And this staircase information is giving me information about my stairs and about what Chief is recommending or expects for the stairs. Right now, Chief Architect says a steep staircase reaches the next level. Chief thinks that the best riser height of 6 and 11 sixteenths is the best riser height to reach the next floor, uh, to reach the next floor and that requires 20 total risers. But you also notice here I have eight treads for each set here. I have two sets of eight treads here. 
But if we look here on the number of risers, it says we have 18 risers. So what's going on there? Well, what happened here is Chief Architect is counting two extra risers that are not treads. So the step from the last tread up to the platform of the next floor, that's considered one tread, or excuse me, that's considered one riser. So stepping from the final tread up to the platform on the next floor, that's considered one riser. And then the other riser is when you're going from the final tread of the first stair section up to the landing. That's considered another riser that's not a tread. The number of treads is always going to be at least one less than the number of risers. And then you subtract one more tread for each additional landing that you have in there. So right now we have 18 tread, excuse me. So right now we have 16 treads, but we have 18 risers. When it says steep staircase reaches next level, that means that the riser height is taller than the best fit or ideal riser height. And we can see that information here. Chief Architect says right here that the best fit riser height of 6 and 11 16 requires 20 total risers. Well, currently we have 18 total risers and we have a riser height of 7 and 7 16 so just about seven and a half inches. So it's a little tall there for us. So what we can do with this information is if I click this button here that says make best fit, what Chief Architect is going to do is Chief Architect is going to adjust the stairs so that they make the best fit. So they make that best fit riser height and we can go up to the stairs from there. So if I click that make best fit button there, and you'll notice that now we have some more stair treads added to these stairs here. And one thing I do want to point out to you here is in this dialog here, we have these options for lock top and lock bottom. And what that means is that that's going to lock a certain position of the stairs in place. Right now, if I leave it at lock top, if I were to click OK right now, what will happen is this will stay where it's at. The extra treads would be added to this stair and push the stairs this way into this wall behind it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the lock bottom option, and that will add the treads to the top of the stairs here. So once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And now you see that I have some, some stairs here right on the very top. Now I can take these stairs and I can simply move them into the corner here, and I'll bump them against this wall here. And we're set and ready to go. So that's, that's L-shaped stairs here. Let's talk about U-shaped stairs. For U-shaped stairs, it's the very same process. I'm simply going to start with one lower stair section, click and drag. And then I'm going to start with another stair section here and click and drag. And then while I still have my stair tool active, I'm going to click where I want my landing to be. So if I want my landing over here, simply click with my mouse and Chief Architect will create a landing for me. And again, I can select this, open it up for specification, and I can make my adjustments here. Now, if I wanted to customize these stairs a bit more, I could certainly do that. Notice right now that the tread depth and the number of treads are grayed out. If I want to customize these a little bit, what I can do is I can lock the number of treads here, and now I have the ability to enter in my own values. So if I wanted to say, for example, I know that I need 20 total risers, which means I need 18 total treads in this case, because I already because I have a step up to the floor platform and one landing. So what I need to do here is make sure that the treads add up to 18, and that can be any combination of 18 from there. So I could do one tread, and then I could do 17 treads here. I could do three treads and 15 treads here. As long as the values add up to 18, it doesn't really matter. So in this particular case, I want to go six treads here, and I want to go 12 treads here. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that my lock bottom option is selected so that again my stairs don't do to uh, so my stairs don't move out over this wall over here. So I'll go ahead and simply click OK here. And now I have my updated stairs there. And again I can then take these use this middle edit handle here to drag them over against the wall. You can have more than two landings in a staircase here and the process works exactly the same way. I'm going to come over here to this set of stairs here, and I'm going to go ahead and draw in, draw in four treads instead of two. Then I'm going to draw another, some more treads over here, and I'll draw another set of treads right about here. Then I'm going to use my, I'm going to, going to click where I want my landings to be, and Chief Architect has made a set of landings for me.
I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this landing. I want to move these a little bit closer again using point-to-point -point move here. So point-to-point -point move. And then I'll click where my landing will go. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and open these stairs up for specification. And again, looks like I have 22 risers right now, and I only need 20. So I can go ahead and make some adjustments on these. So again, I'm going to lock the number of treads, and I'm going to start adjusting my treads. So in this case, I want to go ahead and make my make sure that this stair segment has seven treads instead of nine treads there. So I'll go ahead and type those in there and press the tab key and see how that all updates. And then I want to go ahead and set all of these to have a tread depth of 11 and a half. So go ahead and choose 11 and a half here for all of these. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And I have my stairs updated and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and bump these against the wall here, and I'll go ahead and bump these over a little bit. So now that I've got my stairs drawn here, you'll notice I have uh, a bit of an issue here. I've got a, a bit of a headroom issue here, and that's because we haven't created a stairwell for these yet. So to create a stairwell, all I simply need to do, I can use the automatic stairwell, which is pretty easy. Simply click on the stair tread here, and then click on this button that says Auto Stairwell. When I click on that, you'll notice that Chief Architect has made a stairwell that matches the shape of my stairs on the floor below. That's one way that you can do that. And if I go up to floor two in my plan view here, you'll see that I have my stairwell right here and ready to go. Now this stairwell room, these are just simply railing walls here. So I can reshape this to be whatever I want this to be because this stairwell room is simply an open below room. So I can shape this to be whatever shape I want it to be. So if I want to open this up and maybe have it be a more open staircase, I could drag this back here, back to here. I'll snap that over to right there. And now I have an open staircase all the way up to the second floor there. I can mess with this however I want to. If I wanted to take this one and move it a little bit more this way, I can do that as well. So you have a lot of things that you can play with and do with this staircase tool to make it look, to, to play with with this open below room. And quite literally this room here, if I open this up here, this is simply an open below room type. So that means that the floor below this room has been completely removed, the floor platform is completely gone, and we just go from the floor of the first floor up to the ceiling of the second floor with nothing in between there. That's that open below room type, and that gives you the ability to create these, you know, balconies and that kind of stuff that you have there. So now if I go back to floor one, I'm going to look in my 3D view for a minute here. And you'll notice, I'm looking here and I'm noticing that this is a little bit tight in this corner here. And so I want to make some adjustments. I maybe want to have my stair railing start about maybe two treads up instead of all the way there. I want to go ahead and manually draw in a stair tread here. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to select this stair here, and I'm going to open it for specification. And to turn off railings, you simply go to the railing panel and turn on, turn off the railing or turn off the railing at wall if you don't want the railing at the wall. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, the left-hand railing there and go ahead and click OK. So even though I had this one stair section selected, notice how it affected all of the stair sections in my stairs. So let's go ahead and undo that here real quick and let's make some, let's change that, how that works here. What I want to do in this case instead is I want to select just this particular staircase. So how I can do that is if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and click on that stair section, that's going to highlight just that individual stair section there and I can open it up for specification and then I can go to the railing panel and say turn off the railings on the left and now I have just turned off the railings on that one section. So again, that was holding down the shift key on my keyboard and left clicking on that stair segment. Now that I've done that, what I can do is I'm gonna to go to my railing tool and I'm gonna draw a railing right in here, starting at about the second tread up to the landing. And you'll notice here in my camera view that I have my railing here, but it's being cut off right now by my stairs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the landing that I just drew, the railing that I just drew. I'm going to open it up for specification, and I'm going to go to the rail style panel, and down towards the bottom there's a checkbox here that says follow stairs. So if I check that checkbox and then click OK, what that's going to do is that's now going to start at the stairs and then go up to my landing from there. So you'll notice that the railing that I drew in has a slightly different style than the railings that are on my the rest of my stairs here.
And that's because this railing has been customized through my defaults. So I want to have my stair match this railing. So what I'm going to do for that is this is simply a panel railing that has a cable panel type. So let me show you how to make that happen. I'm going to click on this stair section here. I'm going to open it up for specification. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the railing panel and I'm going to change the rail style from balusters to panels. And notice when I do that, it has the, it makes it a solid panel here. So that's step one in that process. The next step is to go to the newels and balusters panel. And on the newels and balusters panel, I can click the library button right here to choose a different panel style. So I'll go ahead and click the library button here. And I'm going to do a search for cable. And I want to just use the regular cable option here and not the cable with an intersector. So once I've got that done, I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'll click OK. And now my railing style has updated to match the rest of my stairs. Now we're going to move down to the basement. Now I want to draw a set of stairs that go from the foundation or the basement up to the first floor. So to do that, again, I'm going to add my stairs here. And what we're going to do this time, though, is we're going to do things a little bit differently here. I'm going to start by drawing a set of stairs right along here, but I'm only going to draw about five or six of them. I'm going to release my mouse. Now, with my mouse still connected to this corner here, I'm going to draw a second set of stairs here, and we'll go from here. Now what I want to do is I'm going to open these stairs up for specification. And you'll notice I have my Make Best Fit button and that my staircase does not reach the next level. Now, I want to make sure that my, you'll notice down here that I have my sections numbered as 1-1 and 1-2. I want to make sure that section 1-1 stays at 5 treads and there's a very specific reason I want to that I'll show you here in a moment. So because of that, I'm going to make sure that I have se section 1-2 selected. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Make Best Fit button. And what this does is this ensures that when I have this stair section selected, this is the set of this is the stair section that's going to be modified. Notice how this now has a uh, the more stair treads than it did before, and the first stair section, section 1-1, is staying at five treads. The thing to always remember about that is whichever section is selected, whether it's in subsections like this, you know, 1-1, 1-2, or if it's in different stair groups like we have on the floor above, section 1, section 2, section 3, whichever section is selected, that's going to be the one that's going to have stair treads and stair, uh, that's, well, that's one that's going to have stair treads added to it when you click the Make Best Fit button. But now that I've got that here, I've got it where I want it, I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I have my stair tread up there and ready to go. But now what I want to do is I want to have this, the railing from this lower stair section, I want that to dive into a wall right about at the top of the fifth tread here. So how I'm going to do that is with my stairs selected, I want to make sure that I have section 1, 2 as my selected set of stairs. Now I can do that is this red edit handle here. That tells me that this is my selected set of stairs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect that stair section, disconnect the selected subsection here. And when I do that, what that allows me to do is I can now resize this section to be a little bit smaller. And now what I can do is if I go ahead and grab a, an interior wall here, I can draw an interior wall right along here. And then I can have the stairs snap right to that wall there. And now if I take a new camera view looking up the stairs here, you'll see that I have my railing dive right into that wall and go up to the floor above there. Well, that is the, the presentation there. Uh, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and open it up for uh, live questions here. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, ask those here. You raise your hand using the GoToMeeting interface here. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, Carrie will call on you, and you can unmute yourself and then uh, ask your question here. So, uh, Carrie, do we have any questions queued up here? Yes, we do. Uh, we have a question from Jeffrey Baker. Hi, Jeffrey. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, Jeffrey. Hey, How are you? I'm good, Kelly. Thank you. Um, just I have a uh, situation where I've got a set of stairs going from a great room, open ceiling, to a loft, and when I 
show the second floor plan of the loft, I'm not seeing the stairs. So how do I get that to show in my uh, layout? Let me see if I can get something drawn up here real quick. Let me put a second floor on here. Uh, put a second floor on here and like that. Um, and what I'll do on the second floor here is I'll put a little balcony right about here. I'll make this room the open below room. So what you're talking about is essentially you have some stairs that are roughly in this area coming up to the balcony here, right? Yep. Okay. So what we'll do there for that is if we go ahead and turn on our reference display for a minute. Now I'm on floor one at the moment and I'm using that simply as a way to draw my stairs in here. All right. Um, so once we've got that, we'll click on make best fit button and then we'll snap it over there to that spot. That should now on floor two. Perfect. So we've got the stairs there and you notice right away here, I've got my, reference display uh, i can see the stairs going down here because i have this room set to open below so as, okay. we, as long as we have that room type set there that should show it um if it's something where it needs to be you know it's a little bit different or you're not seeing it there you can look at uh turning on the reference display and displaying those that way um you can there's a um there's a layer set that you can assign to a reference display and, and some plan view stuff that you can do to make that work for that view on the layer uh, on the mm -hmm. on the layout there um, I think that's a little bit beyond answer scope. probably I can just call that room open to blow and then in the labeling I can change the label to call it what it needs to be so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah or okay. even just say or even just say not show the room label and you can say right. yep that'll work yeah perfect okay thank you yeah, absolutely Kelly our next question is from Nikki hi Nikki go ahead and ask hi, a question hi uh can you hear me I can how are you Perfect. Uh, doing well. Thank you. Hope you're doing well as well. I recently had a project that we were working on and we were struggling with how to draw this and ended up doing a lot of polyline solids and physically placing things. And it would have been so much easier to know how to do this with the tool, with the stair tools. But it was a historical home. We had a porch and then some stairs coming down from the porch. And on either side of the stairs, it was kind of walled in, basically like an exterior wall, uh, solid railing. Mm -hmm. But the two walls extended beyond the bottom step by about 18 inches. Mm -hmm. And then then it had like a newel post at the end of that. Um, and I was just wondering how I, I didn't have luck trying to do that. Every time I got to the front of the stairs watching mm -hmm. last week, they were talking about if if you're doing drawing a wall under or next to a set of staircase, uh, a staircase, you can hit the follow stair tools, but then everything past that, you know, that point on the second tread that becomes a full height wall or a, a regular, it doesn't follow the stair, what your mm. kind of process so, for that would so be. So it's full height after like the second tread, second or third tread going up the up to the, the porch? Um, well, it, it continues. So it's a, it's a nice continuous railing that follows down. It just reaches beyond the front stairs. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's the way that, that what, and then what they're talking about would, would be the way to do that there. So what you would do is if we had, I'll kind of do it in here, but the same process would work out there uh, on right. the exterior versus in the interior. Cause if we draw a set of stairs here and then we use the straight half wall here, as long as I draw it next to the stairs and kind of bump it up next to it. If I look at that in the camera view here, mm -hmm. you've got that following our stairs there right away. But what right. you're saying is that this goes beyond the stairs uh, oops, right here. So you're saying this goes yeah. beyond the stairs here, but that. But it doesn't flatten out. It continues to angle down until it dies into a, a decorative null post. Gotcha. OK, so what you can do in a regard like that, I typically don't like doing this. But in, in this particular case, that sounds like the best choice for this is if you take a, uh, an elevation view looking at that. What mm -hmm. you can do is you can click on this wall here. And when you do that, you're going to actually get some options to modify this railing. And you can quite literally kind of stretch this out. Or let's see, let's see if I can put some breaks in here and make this work the way that we want it to work here. There we go. Well, we got a break right there already. So if I click on that here, I can go ahead and grab this and kind of basically. So what I did there, I did have to. Interesting oh. that it didn't do that. <laughs> well, that's frustrating. So if I grab, let's do it this way. Let me put a break right in here. Solid railings don't like to be broken, apparently. That's what's causing. That's interesting. Um, so then what you do is you'll do this, is we're going to take this wall. I'm going to put it back to these stairs here. And I'm going to draw a second wall 
uh, straight half wall. That's what I'm looking for right here. And I think we can, I think we can modify that in the elevation view here. I thought we could. If not, you can grab a full height wall and do it that way, I think. Yes, okay, so full height wall, we can drag that down to here, and then you could okay. go like that. Okay, and then just place the Newell Post manually. Exactly right, yep, yep. Oh, and be... then, is it still, po I, I just remembered, there was actual like a little bit of railing above that. Is there, is that possible as well? So yeah, so let me go ahead and um, you can open this up. And if you go to the wall types panel, or excuse me, excuse me, first step would be to make it a railing wall. And then on the wall types panel, you can make it a pony wall. And that okay. will actually give you uh, a railing there. You have to play with that a little bit. There's there's going to, I mean, polyline solids is kind of probably a little bit of an easier way to do it, to be honest with you. Um, but you're okay. not going to get any, of the, at least from a visual perspective, but you're not going to get any of the framing stuff that goes with that there. Exactly. Um, so on well, just the railing specification alone that mm -hmm. <laughs> placing all those things individually <laughs> yes yes no I, I i don't disagree with you there you can if you make a um let's i'm curious now if i take this oops drag this out this way and maybe breaking it from plan view instead of elevation view yeah well it's going to do this but we're going to i'm trying to see if i can get the uh, let's see, we'll go about that. We're going to go to the rail style panel and we'll make it baluster. So that'll give us that. So we have those both there. And then what we can do is we can adjust the heights of that wall here. So what we're doing here is I'm taking this wall. Let me bring this over here so we can kind of see them side by side. Oh, come on now. There we go. Um, is So right now, the, you notice that the height jumped up here. Mm -hmm. And that's because I made that a pony wall here. And if I open that up, on the pony wall specification here, I can say I want this, you know, six inches off the floor. And what that will do is that will start the diving process, getting it closer to the floor there. Um, but yeah, railings don't don't like to be shaped like that, unfortunately. Um, I mean, if, if anybody, uh, any of my other chief staff here have any ideas, I'd be happy to hear them, but I don't know if there's an easy answer for that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I know I wasn't missing something. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, unfortunately, I don't know that there's an easy answer for that one, unfortunately. So, yeah, I think you're All on right. the right track. All right. Well, thank you. Yep. Kelly, let's check in with Muriel. Hi, Muriel. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Muriel. Hi. Oh, hi. Um, thanks for, for answering my, uh, my question um, or sure. going to answer my question actually have a very simple question. So in your original shot of the stairway, it looked very realistic. Mm -hmm. um, can you show me again how to make it look that so realistic? That is, that is using um, what's called the, um, the physically based rendering technique. So if I go back to, um, if I go here to the plan that I have here, it's this one. Um, so I should have, I believe I have a saved camera in here that has that for me. Let me take, let me see if I've got it turned on here real quick. Well, I'll just take the pic, I'll take a picture of it here. So what this is here is this is just, um, I took a regular camera view and all I did while I was here is I turned on the, um, I changed the rendering technique here to physically based. Now, this is probably not going to look as realistic as the original one, because in the original one, I had some, um, some, uh, windows along here and a lot of what uh, makes physically based look as good as it does is your lighting and your lighting techniques so we've got a couple of really good webinars on our website that talk about that a lot better than i can in this particular case but um that's kind of what i did there was i just changed the rendering technique to physically based rendering and that oh. helped quite a bit there and i also have just a second question um uh -huh. you know i come up with a lot of like little questions like this as well um mm -hmm. but i find that it would be helpful if you guys had a call-in center instead mm -hmm. of emailing all the time. You can, um, you can call our technical support team. Oh, you can. Okay. So Absolutely. where do you get that number? I uh, it's on our website at chiefarchitect.com. Um, okay. So if you go to our website, chiefarchitect.com, and click on support here at the top. Right. Um, on our support page here, down under our contact uh, options here is contact support. And here are our support phone numbers right here down at the bottom. Oh, okay. So I can just call. That's great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. You can call, you can ask questions and 
Well, we'll happy, be happy to help you out. And what we'll typically do is we'll, if we have a quick answer for you, we'll answer the question for you. If uh, if it's something that's a little bit more in depth, we'll try and point you to a more in depth resource. And um, could you like share your screen with me or is that not possible? No, so that's so that's something that our, uh, if it's something where you're looking for more like personalized training, our technical support team really is more about um, uh, technical issues and, and error messages, things of that nature, but they are pretty good about um, if you need a little quick, like, you know, something's not working in the right direction. If it's something where it's a, I need a one-on-one uh, -on -one train, I need someone to share a screen and kind of more personalized information, we do have one-on-one -on -one training services available. Uh, that is a paid service. It's $125 for an hour, and that's one of the things that I do here at the, the company. Um, and basically, we we do share uh, screen sharing at that point, and you have essentially that trainer's undivided attention for that hour. So oh, whatever questions great. you can uh, ask and that kind of stuff, you can you can do that as well. Okay, and I just noticed you don't have a Canadian um, telephone number, so it would just be United States. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Kelly, our next question comes from someone at Lifestyle Design. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. Hi, Kelly. This is also Kelly. How are you? I'm doing well, Kelly. Nice to talk to you. Good. <laughs> I was wondering if you could show, you kind of had it on your screen when you switched back um, to talking to us, how to do um, pie steps where a landing might be, where you had like three pie steps in that corner. I'm not familiar with the term pie stops, but I know. Yeah, you had like three steps in the corner there. Oh, so winders. Mm -hmm. We call those winders. So okay. yes, we can do winders, absolutely. So let's talk about doing winders here real quick. So winders are, are kind of a four step process, four or five step process here, but it's it's pretty self-explanatory. So are pretty straightforward once you understand it. So first step here is you're gonna draw out a, sec a section of stairs, and this is gonna be your first lower straight section. That's okay. gonna be step number one. And then towards the, uh, I don't know if you remember, towards the end of the video where I drew a second stair segment off of the first stair segment, we're mm -hmm. going to do the same thing here. We're going to click, we're going to keep our mouse right here, and we're going to click and drag another about three or four treads here. Now, this stick, now I do have two divided uh, stair segments here, and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to arc or turn this stair segment to the angle that I want these this, the turn to happen at or the winders to happen at there. So what I'm going to do for that is if I right click with my mouse or if I hold down the alt key on my keyboard, okay. um, I can turn the stairs here by grabbing this top edit handle here. I'm going to uh, do that one more time just so you guys can see that there. I'm going to click on the stairs. I'm going to put my mouse on this corner, this edit handle right here, and I'm going to right click and drag to turn those stairs where I want them to be here. I'm going to move these down just a little bit. And then I'm going to draw a third stair segment that would be my next straight stair segment. What, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure these are bumped into the corner here. Then I'm going to open them up for specification. And I'm going to check the winders checkbox here. And then I'll also click the make best fit on section one three here. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And when I do that, if I look here in the camera view, we've got our winders. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So all it is there is it's draw the, the draw the first stair segment that's going to be your first straight stair segment. Draw the second one that's going to be the the corner or the curve there, and then draw the third stair segment going from there. The one trick with those and there are the kind of the one caveat to be aware of with those is that they do they really need to be in a corner because when you mark a, a set of stairs as a winder, it's going to try and find a wall to bump into to give it the shape that it needs in in this little corner right here. So okay. that's a little caveat to be aware of with that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Absolutely. Kelly, we had Charles right in. He doesn't have a mic, so I'll ask his question. He was For wondering sure. if you have time to explain how to build winders and maintain a 10 inch tread at the 12 inch walk line and also minimum six inch treads on the inside. Okay. All right, yes, we can do that. So it, now, so the winders that we just did, those are an, automate, an automated winder process. So that's very, um, so that's that's an automatic uh, winder process. Chief just kind of makes those. And unfortunately, you don't have a ton of control over all of those things as far as making sure that you've got the six inch versus the 10 inch at the walk line, so on and so forth. So how do we make that there? And, and unfortunately, the process is actually a pretty manual process, but it's pretty straightforward once you kind of kind of get the idea of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a set of stairs here. I'm going to draw my two stair segments here just to kind of have them there for reference. The next thing that I want to do here is I'm going to actually start with drawing out some CAD. So I'm going to draw a CAD box here. And what I'm going to do with this CAD box here is I'm going to draw it out and make it 
about the size of my uh, of my winders here. And what I'm looking here for specifically is I'm measuring from the wall to the bottom of essentially where this tread would be is where I'm going to make that size. So I'm going to say that this in this case is let's say it's four feet even. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make that four feet, and I'm going to go ahead and make this side four feet as well, just for ease of use here. So I'm going to use this box as kind of a reference point going forward here. And what I'm going to do here is I want to go ahead and draw in a uh, I'm going to draw in a line here. And again, I'm using this this particular line that I'm drawing in here is going to be more of a reference point. It's not going to be useful uh, too useful in the final product here. But what I'm doing here is I'm drawing this line out as as a 45 degree angle. And if I open this up for specification. Uh, you can see its angles 135 or, or 45 in this particular case. But what I'm going to use here with this, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to use that as a snap point to get the angles for my walls here, or my tread, my winders here, excuse me. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to draw this line up and I'm going to move it to the right so it snaps once. That snap there, that's a 15 degree increment in this particular case. So that's going to give me this the side of one tread here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to drag over here snaps once, drag it to the wall. And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and get rid of this particular line. Now you'll notice when I clicked on that, this is an important thing to see here. You notice when I click on that, notice how I have an edit handle here and I have an edit handle right here. That means Chief has made this into a polyline as one, one uh, signified object here, one, um, one object here. And if I were to just simply press the delete key on my keyboard, it's gonna delete both of those lines, which is not what I want in this case. So I'm gonna undo that real quick here. I'm gonna click on that line. And what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of this line here, this middle line here. This is my select, um, my line here. And I wanna make sure that it's my selected edge and I can tell it's my selected edge by that red edit handle that's there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disconnect that edge from the, disconnect that edge from the polyline. That's that button that, that button right down here on the toolbar that says disconnect uh, selected edge here. So that edge is selected. I'm gonna click on disconnect there. And now it's made it its own individual line and I can delete it. So this is roughly, not quite exactly, but roughly what my stairs are gonna look like, or my winders are gonna look like here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump these stairs into the landing here and do the same thing over here. And I'm gonna use these as a reference point here for working with my stairs here, or for my landings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm gonna draw a line from the end of the stairs up to this intersection point right here. And when I do that, I'm also going to take this line right here and connect it back to that point. And what I'm doing right now is I'm simply drawing out, I'm cl simply clicking and tracing and drawing out the shape that my landing is going to be here. So what I did there again, so I drew first the line to go from the stairs up to this line here. And now I'm taking this line and connecting it here to start that process here. Then I'm drawing the rest of the lines to make uh, the shape of my winder here. So this is my wind, this is winder number one. I'm going to do the same process on the other side. I'm going to draw a line, bring it up to here, select this line and drag it back into here. And then I'm going to close that shape, the rest of that shape in there like this. So I've got that there so far. Last step that I want to do here. And the thing I'm looking at here when I, um, last step I'm going to do here is I'm then going to go and take this shape right here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna modify it to fill in this space right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this line, drag it up to here, take this line, drag it over to here, snap it to this point. Then I'm gonna take this corner and snap it right to there. Oops, I missed a step here in the process, my apologies. I need to put a break right at these two points. So break is this tool right down here. So I'm gonna click on the break tool, put a break right here. Now that I've done that, I can drag this edge up and this is gonna stay where it's at, which is what I want. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna select this edge, put a break in it, right there, drag that over. And then I'm gonna drag this into the corner here. So now I have three separate polylines that match my shape here. Now, what I'm gonna do with these here is I'm gonna go ahead and select these and I can convert them all to landings here. So I can go ahead and click on the landing. Uh, so I clicked on the convert button. So I group select all these right down here is the convert button to convert polyline to a landing. That's this option right here. I'll convert those to a landing. And I'll go ahead and leave these at the default for now and click OK. And that will give us what we're looking for. Now, if we want to make sure and verify that these are all the correct sizes and so on and so forth, I can turn on the display of my walk line here. So if I group select these stairs and open them up for specification, on the style panel, 
I have a show walk line button here and I can set how far that's in. So in this case, 12 inches, I'll go ahead and click OK. And that shows me my walk line here. And I can basically grab another line here and kind of keep drawing it. I'm setting it right about here and drawn, drawn it up to this point. I'm going to take another one, set it here, draw it to this point, and then draw a connection to this point here. And I can basically, at this point, I can grab my, um, my tape measure tool here, and I can measure from this line to this line here. So I've got a foot and a 7 16th. That's at one there. I can draw from here to here, should be a foot, and I can draw from here to here. That gives us a foot as well. And I can also measure from using my tape measure, I can go from this point right here to this point right here. So that one's a little small. So what I would do in that case is I would click on this and move it back a little bit. Oop. I'm going to shift click on this, move this one back a little bit here. I'm going to grab this edge. And I click on this edge here and notice I see this dimension here, this five, and, and I can click on that and say make that six inches. And then I can bump these back together again. And I can do the same thing on this edge here. So I can again click on, I'll click right here on this landing here. Again, this landing needs to get moved a little bit. So I'll hold down the shift key, move that over a little bit, click on this edge. Again, I'm clicking on the right hand edge of the edge that's going to move in this case. Click on the number, set it to six inches. And then once I've done that, I can bump it back into place. And we have our stairs set and ready to go. It's a little, it's a bit of work to get it working right, but once you got it, once you've got it in there. Uh, you can get it working there. So it's a combination of using that CAD, those CAD polylines you've drawn in there to basically, you start out by first creating the area where that's going to be, and then you subdivide that using the poly, the lines, uh, the CAD lines you have there, and then you convert them into landings. And landings automatically step up to the tread height of the staircase that they're connected to. So if you have a landing next to a landing next to a landing, then they're all going to automatically follow that up to the next tread step and go on their way from there. So, Charles, I hope that answers your question. Um, if you if I, I went a little fast on that, I apologize, but you should be able to kind of go through on the on the review there. And when you watch it again there and that should get you get you where you're going there once you've got that video emailed out to everybody. So I hope that answers your question. Sounds good. Thanks, Kelly. We have our next question from Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Kelly. I like to say that the uh, the last part of the recorded one was exactly what I was aiming for uh, on last week's question, which uh -huh. yes, <laughs> well, okay. I was trying to set the partial railing piece, and it, it it didn't translate as well, but that worked out really well, knowing that you can break the stair into that. Mm -hmm. um, so the the important part about that is make sure that you draw the two different stair segments there before you do the break. Yeah, you know, it was one of those pieces where every previous version wouldn't let you do that, so I just kind of, you know, blindly went, oh, I can't do that. Um, mm -hmm. And following, but that, that's not really where my question is today. I just want okay. to say thanks for that. Um, Excellent. I was having an error with a U-shaped stair, and again, it's it's got to be something I'm just not doing right in the settings, but so um, – U-shaped stair with a bigger landing, a wider landing than the, than the stairs are. So, okay. you know, like, let's say the stairs were the standard 39 inches, and but the landing was, you know, uh, 50 inches or whatever it is, you know, something mm -hmm. wider. And okay. the stairs themselves, well, actually deeper, I should say, not, not okay. wider. Um, it was a stair width, but yeah. Um, so I was using the runner tool to do carpet on the stairs because if you change just the stair tread and the stair riser material to be carpet, it shows it like a tucked. Um, it doesn't show like the, the angle sort of flowing carpet just, you know, going down. Okay, so, so you're talking about like how it kind of wraps underneath the nose of the Correct. tread there? Yeah, and okay. like in, in the, in the um, runner option you have a tucked runner option basically it would be like hey this would be if you if you used your staple gun and shot the staples up underneath the tread and right. it mm -hmm. pulls the carpet underneath but that's not how this looks it's got the sort of flowing it'll just fall off down you know to the and sort of have an angle back to the back of the the, the bottom tread and then so on all the way down so i was using the runner option and putting the runner at the width of the stairs you know, where it says right now runner zero, I was putting them at the width of the stairs. They're a closed, it's like a boxed area. So, you know, it was, it just had a boxed in um, trim to each side. Mm -hmm. But the interesting part was 
that you know it works fine on the stair systems, but when the when it had a connected landing, the the landing was only partially exactly like that. The landing is only partially covered by the by the quote unquote runner if I made my landing material carpet, you mm -hmm. literally see a bump in it. So what you could do with that, let me look here real quick. And like you don't have any options seemingly in landing other than changing the materials again. Mm -hmm. uh, so for something like that, there isn't a way to, to adjust the runner uh, width yeah. there beyond, beyond the width of the stairs. Um, you, so it's cheap, you, good. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so a way around that um, would be to because you can't even turn off the landing runner. Right, right. You cannot do that. You are correct. Um, so what you could do, the easiest thing that I could think of that would um, what I would do is I would let's see. I don't think we have a because if you paint. Layer. If you paint the, the 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 landing tread, the the whole landing, the whole surface of the landing with right. carpet, right? You, it, it, you've got the bump there. You'll, you'll see have the bump. the bump of the runner. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the only way that I could get around to that at this point that I'm thinking of would be to draw a essentially a polyline solid or some type of object in, okay. that, in that space that has the same material. Just float it over the top of it. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Okay. okay. Got yeah, it. Thank that's, you. that's a good feature request for future versions. So I'll, I'm going to write that down, actually. That's a good awesome. feature request. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. We have Kurt here with a question. Hey, Kurt, go ahead and ask your question. Thanks. That was great. I, uh, it's been awesome, like, just a wide of That's my first question. My second question is railings return to the wall on, on the wall's sides. Gotcha. Um, Let's see here, I'm looking at something real quick here. No, there really isn't a way to get to get that uh, to return to return back to the wall unless Dermot, you've got a, a an insight on that at this point. Um, um, Kelly, I I do have some information that might help. I'm not sure yes. if this is exactly what the customer is looking for, but if you go back into the stair dialog and go to the rail rails panel and mm -hmm. select the top rail. Aha. There's a couple of controls there. So you can add a return at the bottom, and you'll see that in the preview image what that looks like. And mm -hmm. you can also extend it out if you like. So go ahead and put in like a six inch extension. Uh -huh. right. That's it. That's all you can do. If you want to do anything more complicated, you're probably going to need to use a molding um, polyline. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's that, something perfect. you can mold. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks for that, Dermot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have Wilson Matthews. Hi, Wilson, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Perry, that was a very nice presentation. Thank you. Okay, I have a question here. When you when you're doing a stair from the basement to the to the first floor, mm -hmm. on right, could you please go to your basement? Uh, so let's go here down to the first floor, okay. Not to the uh, level zero. Say that again. Yeah. So this is, this is floor, this is floor zero. Uh, right here is floor zero. Yes. Okay. So right now you don't have a uh, dry wall on the side of the foundation wall, mm -hmm. but if you have a dry wall there, and if you come to the first floor, then that wall is not lining up there. So how do you deal with the stair in that situation? So you're talking about if you had like a furred wall there. Yes. Okay, so if we make that, let me put a furred wall in here real quick. We'll do it this way. Let me grab a furred wall. So to mark, make a furred wall, just while we're here and talking yeah. about it, I'm going to take this wall, draw it in here. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to go to the structure panel and mark it as a furred wall. Yeah. And once I've done that, I'll then bump it into the wall yeah. there. So yes. the question is, when I do that, that the stair on the – on the you're talking about the opening on the floor above doesn't match properly? Yeah, 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 because – okay, if you – if you start drawing a stair from this this level to up, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna move this down here for just a sec, or stretch this yeah, out down yeah. here for just a second, so I can okay. get a better idea. So if I draw a stair from the first floor going up to the second floor, 
Okay, and then I make like an open, uh, op make myself an um, an opening there. I just went and clicked on auto stairwell there. And if I go up to the floor above, let me get rid of these stairs for a minute here. If you look at 3D view there, I mean. Gotcha. So you're talking like right yeah. here? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in something like that, you can do a couple of different options. To, to correct that. One option would be to, um, you can take, you could put a, uh, a wall, you could draw simply just draw a wall right along here. So if I grab the straight interior wall, you could draw a wall right along in here and mark, let's see here. Got a little excited with my rooms here, but I could essentially take that wall and kind of bump it in and kind of do the same thing. Mark that as a third wall as well. And if I look at that in the camera view there, that would be, that's not, perfect but that's one option there that you could do you could kind of take that and line it up and, and go on your way that way uh, another option is you could put a wall cap um on the on there using some type of like a polyline solid or something of that nature okay so if you grab uh, either a polyline solid or a soffit tool or something similar um you could do that that really is the the two best options there of of kind of some type of a polyline solid or another wall that's drawn on top of that in that same space there to create that that area there yeah yeah but if you draw a wall then what happens after the stair like then that yeah yeah to the top yeah so you're talking draw a wall so if i draw yeah, just, a wall right here yeah just there then what happens after that then there'll be a bump there right Jog there. there would be a bump there yes or you could take this this stair here all the way or this wall here all the way up okay and so at that point you'd look at it would look at something like like okay. that oh, okay yeah. yeah just make it a little bit shorter there Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And what is one last question? What is that uh, walk line doing? What is the walk line doing? It's showing you the the minimum size of the walk line there, or kind of the ideal walking path for that there. Okay. Um, and that's what that's that's what show, that's showing there. There's typically a minimum code length for how far that walk line can be from the edge of the stairs, or how far that ideal walking path can be from the edge of the stairs there. Um, that's typically a local court or, uh, code ordinance. I know, I believe in California, it's 12 inches. Um, so, but you can kind of adjust that as you, uh, if, if you open up the stairs there and you, um, you say, I want to show my, uh, walk line, you can say, how far is that walk line supposed to be from the edge? So okay. that's what you can do there with that. Does it make any change in the stair? Or? No, it's simply for display and code purposes. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. Right. Thank, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, Wilson. Kelly, can right. I uh, add some clarification real quick? Absolutely, Dermot. Go ahead. So <clears throat> it's my understanding that the walk line is used for the tread depth calculations for a stair with uh, a curved stair or a stair with winders. Uh, the program, uh, I believe, tries to keep the tread depth the same along the walk line. So if you imagine a curved stair, the treads are wider on the outside than on the inside, but they should be uniform along the walk line, and that is um, usually a code requirement. Gotcha. Thank you for clarifying that, Dermot. I appreciate it. All right. Kelly, our next question is from Vicki. Hi, Vicki. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. Um, you've shown different techniques of drawing stairs you know, sort of manually, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I've always done. But there's an automatic feature for an L-shaped stair and a U-shaped stair. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular advantages or disadvantages to doing it that way? Uh, not particularly. The L-shaped stairs and the U-shaped stairs are, if I click on that tool there, and they are, um, you can choose, you know, uh, landing and whether you want to make it winders and that kind of stuff. Make winders is a little deceptive um, because it's um, when you click on that, it's going to basically make just two winder treads right in that area there. Um, the the reason I don't like using this as much is I have to do a bit more manual modification after the fact. When I use this tool, it is going to create stair lengths that are stair treads that are exactly the same length, or uh, not stair treads, stair sections that are exactly the same length. And so um, at that point, if I wanted to have, you know, this section be shorter, I have to open it up for specification here and say I want to lock the number of treads and then start adjusting my treads to be what I want them to be. 
Um, whereas when I do just the manual drawing, I can get my stairs exactly the way that I want them at the time that I draw the stairs. So that's really the biggest benefit between the two of them, um, or the biggest benefit of manually drawing it. But for quick and easy stairs, of just I need them the same size, the same the same width, and everything like that. Use the L shape and U shape stair tool. I think that's just fine. Does the U shape chair? You know, a lot of times you'll have a U shape stair where uh, the lower the the upper part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. from the first floor perspective is going to be a closet. So you're putting a little wall under there. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you don't want it that way. You kind of want them apart. It, does the U-shaped stair automatically do anything? How, how does it represent a, a stair when you just use that tool? So if you do use the U-shaped stair, you can set a gap between the stair treads there. So if we set that to, let's say, you know, um, Oops, hold on a minute here. Let me click on that again. U-shaped stair, we're not going to make it winders, but we can do something like, let's say we can make the gap essentially as wide as that closet is going to be, including the width of those walls. So I could say, let's make the, if we have our closet be, you know, seven feet wide, I could make uh, the gap here, I'd make that uh, probably eight and a half feet just to be safe and then kind of adjust it as I need to. And then what I can do is I click OK and I will create and place some stairs right here. <clears throat> And we'll, then what I can do is I can draw my use my uh, wall tools here and draw in some walls to create my closet in that space. Okay. And if you have the gap to zero, then uh -huh. can you have, you know, the typical closet where um, you open up the closet door under what's going to be the top part of the stairs and oh, sure. you have the stair underneath that? Mm -hmm. You would so do that I as a zero gap? Yeah, so if I go and U-shape stair, and we'll set that to a zero gap and click OK, and then I will, so this again, whatever, whichever one is up is going to be your bottom tread here. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And then if I look at that in my camera view here, got, I got a lot of things open here, so give me a moment. If I look at that in my camera view here, it's by default going to leave it open. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you can do here is you can go to uh, back in plan view. You can grab your wall tool. And you can draw a wall underneath there. So if I go and drag a wall here, I can draw a wall across here like this, and a wall across here like that. And then if I look at that in the camera view, and then you can put a door right there and go on your way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Kelly, our next question comes from Andre King. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Listen, um, now this question is sort of two questions. So let me start by asking the first one. I mm -hmm. realize that basically the stair is basically two tools acting together, which is basically the stair itself. And then obviously it has railing, uh, a railing component. And what mm -hmm. I realized with the railing component of the stair is that sometimes uh, even though you have nice out of the box solutions, they tend to use a lot of cable railing and so on on my projects of recent. But what happens if I have a combination where the bottom of that panel is actually solid and then I have a smaller portion on the top of that that actually is cable railing, which is possible, which is a possible deal that does mm -hmm. happen. How easy it, is it to, to kind of do something like that in chief? Um, I would, I think it's actually somewhat easy here. Let me, um, I'm going to go over to this section here to clean it up a little bit here. So you're talking like if we had a, set of uh, a set of stairs kind of going um let's just do it like this we'll just have a set of stairs going this way and you're saying part of it is solid and then part of it is cable well not in that sense i'm thinking of it let's use the z axis let's let's explain it properly mm -hmm. if i'm coming through the z axis so coming up from my actual stair let's say half of the height so let's say it's 42 half of that 42 is solid but then mounted on that solid portion is the actual cable railing which tends to happen if you have a stringer, if you have a closed stringer stair scenario, kind of like that. Okay, so you're talking about having a lower section that's solid and an upper section that's going to yes, be solid. Yes, gotcha. yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm understanding now. Yes, that is something you can do for sure. So how are you going to do that? The, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to use the straight half wall. Okay. Um, use a straight half wall, and the reason I'm using the straight half wall, and I'm actually going to draw it out away from the stairs. That's step number one here, and then I'm going to bump it into the stairs. And what these walls do here, if we look at that in our camera view here, is that now follows the stairs by default. So that's mm -hmm. just going to go up and follow the stairs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up for specification. 
And on the wall types panel, I'm going to check this checkbox that says pony wall. Uh -huh. And what that's going to do is that's going to make it so that I have a solid, I'm going to have a wall on the bottom and the wall on the top here. And what okay. I'm going to do at the height off floor value is I'm going to set the height of the lower wall section, the lowest point of that wall, how tall that lowest point is, I'm going to set that height there. So if that means it's six inches off the floor there and then kind of goes up from there, we'll leave okay. it at the six inches. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the rail style panel and I'm going to make this panels in this case. And if I go to the then go to the newels and balusters, mm -hmm. I'm going to click on the library button here and grab my cable. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And mm -hmm. when I click OK on that. You get that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier than I thought. Yeah, yeah beginnings of that started in x11 and it kind of came to full fruition here in x12 um and it but yeah that's exactly what you're going to do there so you're going to use that pony wall tool to make uh to make those two separate railings there uh gotcha. stacked on top of each other there gotcha. the important gotcha. step there is you want to make sure that you use that um you don't have to use it but it's easiest to use the half height wall because it's all because the half height wall already has a couple of things going for it one is it's already marked as a railing which is what you need to have this marked as a railing in order for that to work uh -huh. the other thing that it also has going for it is it has the follow stairs checkbox checked automatically oh, okay. or by default so when those two things are kind of already set there the next couple of steps aren't that hard to do to to get it looking the way that you need it to look okay all right good so a second question now Mm -hmm. Sometimes I find if I create a stair, much like how I saw in most of your examples, you would tend to frame out the room, not a full room, but just a corner where you could basically fit the stair in, so to speak. I realize, I, I know there's a setting for it, but I can't remember what the setting is. If for whatever reason the wall comes too close to the stair rail, the railing starts to behave really funky. And I mean, like, if it's a case where the wall isn't fully passed and along the stair, so when it, it causes the stair rail to morph or try to bend around the wall is there a setting that you can set to stop the railing from behaving strangely like that so it remains parallel it remains parallel with the um the, the wall unfortunately I, I i'm not aware of a setting like that um where it kind of starts to morph around the wall like that because it's what it's trying to do there is if we do something like where we take this um let's see here if i can get an, as an example set up here what it comes down to is it's going to um it's it's going to try and follow the wall and it's going to what it just tries to morph and follow the wall around it. And unfortunately, there's not an, an easy way to to correct that um, short of manually drawing. I believe you have to manually draw some railings in there that you can kind of control that there. But you'd have to offset it a certain amount and that can get a little little funky there as well. If, if Dermot, if you've got some insight on that, I'd, I would appreciate that as well. Um, <clears throat> it, in some cases, your best solution is just to turn off the rail at wall. Uh -huh. And then only draw your own in. Um, depending on your particular layout, what you might want to do is add a complete break to the stair and turn it off for a portion of the wall where it's okay. doing a funky jog. Um, those are a couple of strategies. Sometimes, if your things aren't aligned properly or you know you've actually got a space between you and the wall, you can fix it simply with that. So yes. in, the, in the example Kelly is showing right now, um, it's doing a weird bend there. I All right. turn that railing off for those first two steps by adding a complete break. Oh. Okay. So how the, how the complete break works, just so we're here, is if we click on this here, the stairs here, down on the bottom, we've got the break tool. And when you, when you just click on the break tool, what that will do is that will break it into subsections. So if I open this up here, it's still, 1-1, one 1-2 dash one, one dash there. And so that's going to, um, that's still going to, if I were to go to the um, the railing panel and turn it off there, I would then go ahead and, uh, whoops, wrong side. Um, but it would turn off the, um, it would turn off the, um, no, it even did it that way. There we go. So when I broke it into the subsections there, it still had, oh, because I turned off the railing. So what I did there is I turned off the railing, but left railing at wall on. So oh. that did it that way that that got that going there. Um, so that would turn off the railing there. Or the other thing that you can also do is with this railing here, if we wanted to do a complete break, which is what Dermot was talking about, is if I come down to the break tool, there's this option here that says uh, it's the the break line with a C next to it. And uh -huh. that is a complete break where it, it turns it into two completely separate stair segments. 
and I could go in and turn off the, uh, at that point, it kind of treats it like two different rail segments there. And I can turn off the railing on that and go on my way from there. I think I had the wrong one selected. But yeah, that's the that's general idea there. Okay. And the advantage of the complete break is if you wanted to pull those steps out a little wider, then that would work too. Yeah. And what I'm doing right there is you're, by doing that complete break, I can pull them out and make them a little bit wider, kind of looking at the stairs there. Um, how I want to. So if I pull another camera on that, there you go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks Absolutely. A lot. Yeah. Kelly, let's check in with Kareem. Hi, Kareem. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. Good afternoon, guys. Hey, how are you? I'm good. good. Okay. I have a question. Uh, the winders, mm -hmm. after you create the winders, however, if you do like an elevation view, mm -hmm. um, you notice you see the rough edges of the winders at the base. There's no stringer that goes around. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just leaves it jagged. So I sometimes I try to hide it, you know, by putting a wall or something, but is there a way to get the stringer to just, you know, follow the same, the winders, you know, so to create a smooth look? So in, in how I have this example set up right now of the landings, I don't believe there is a way to get that stringer to follow. Um, but I believe if you do the, the automatic winders, I do believe that stringer follows along there. So if we do the couple of steps here, a couple of steps here, we curve that. And then we do a couple more here. And then we turn these into winders. I do believe if I look at that in a camera view, and let's turn off the underside of it here. Uh, da, 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 style. Um, what am I looking for here? Turn it, where's that, what does that turn that off there? We'll just do it that way. See if that works. <laughs> The easiest is open riser. Is it open riser? Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that'll do it. And then let's add a stringer here. I do believe that will follow along there. When you so that will follow along there. That stringer will follow along when you do the uh, automatic uh, treads like that. But when you do mm -hmm. the uh, the ones like I did over here, um, where it's just the landings like I've done there, then that that stringer mm -hmm. won't follow along there. Oh, wow. So I guess I'd, I'd have to continue just using a polyline or creating a wall or something just to hide that, that those rough edges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question, though. Mm -hmm. uh, the same way, the, the, um, the rails, mm -hmm. that's another issue. When you, you know, you, you create the manual winders, the rails are sometimes, you know, depending on, if it is the stairs a youth type stair, you know, or how close the, the upper end of the stair is, it, it then, you know, creates some kind of weird kind of setting for the for the um especially if you're using like panels, panel rails, it uh -huh. gives it, you know, weird kind of thing. You know, is there a way to get it to smooth it out? So, you know, just as the staircase, you know, regular uh -huh. staircase is uh, the, the best that I've come up with for the staircase is to uh, turn off the railings that are uh, come with the stairs and then manually draw my own stair seg uh, my own railing segments for those stairs. So like for this in this particular case, if I turn off or if I turn off the um, railing on these stairs here, and then I'll also go ahead and turn off the railings on these landings here. Uh, no railings. What I can do is I can grab my rail tool and I basically would draw in a railing uh, underneath the, I would actually draw it underneath the stairs here. I draw one here and draw one along here. And then what I would do is I'd actually go and draw another railing that connects here between the two of these. Make that a little bit smaller there. And I actually go and just to kind of try and make it look a little bit nicer is I'll actually go and curve that railing a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll click on each of these railings and open them up and say um, follow stairs. And I do that on the rail style panel here. I set that to follow stairs. And then when I look at that in the camera view there, that looks a little, it's not 100% perfect, but it looks a little bit nicer. Yeah, yeah it does. 
<laughs> no, it's like, duh. <laughs> so that's the way yeah, that I would wow. do that is, uh, So basically you draw a draw a railing underneath each of these stairs and then draw the connection. And then I just for simply easy to make it look a little bit nicer, I put a little arc here. And that gives that nice look of the of the on the winders there as you're going around, wow. and then go on your way from there. I don't. I I really don't know why they never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Because I, I use right a lot ahead. of rails and and <laughs> I use a lot of rails and um we, um uh wire rails and and glass. So mm -hmm. you know sometimes because of the panels, the size of the glass panels, you know, get you know. But wow, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Kelly, we have Yvette here with a question. Yvette, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Kelly. Um, Hi. Thank you for the, the information on the um, complete break. I didn't know about that. That's really useful. Um, hopefully this is a simple question, but how do you make the, um, the side stringer a different color material than the risers on the stair? I believe it's once you the is that tied to the risers at this point because I believe a stringer and risers are two different things there. So if you open that up, I believe let me let's take a look and find out here. So if I grab a material here, we'll grab a we're gonna grab a color we're gonna grab a blue something. We're gonna grab the we'll call the blue gradient just because we have it here. And if I click on that, set that to component mode and click on this right here. So is that what you're looking for? Or, the, or, outer, the outer stringer so that if, you know. Like, oh, this right here? Yes. Okay. So first things first is we, oops, I closed, hit the wrong button here. Uh, let me get my camera back up there. First things first is we need to turn on the outer stringer here um, because we don't have it on right now. So if I open this up for specification here, um, we're going to go ahead and say um, two closed side stringers here. And when I've got that turned on, I can then uh, change the material on that stringer that's different than the uh than that but if i'm if i'm trying to change the side of the steps in general the tread the actual tread there so let me yeah. turn that off for just a second back on here for or turn that off for a second here so if i'm trying to train change the, just this material this is all tied to the riser so um if i change it here it's going to change it across the, the entire way there i thought you had it on the stair that you showed um at the very beginning of the presentation uh so you're talking let's let's do a couple of let's do it this way let me close this and not save it and open that back up here so you're talking about uh how i've got it white against the wall um, there no no you know, so if there's a wall under the stairs and I want mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the, the um, trim, the stringer board, mm -hmm. you know, follows the contour of the stairs on, on the top and then is a is an angle on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that's white, but then but the risers are, you know, the same material as the treads. Gotcha. So that would be we'd have to turn on uh, you'd have to put something there um, because uh, that would be. Um, that would be there what's what's going on there. So we, we'd have to put the closed stringer on, uh, but that closed stringer is not going to follow the shape of the stairs there yet. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that we would like to see in future versions, but I, I don't know that we have uh, where that is in that process at this point. But um, yeah, so what it comes down to is this, uh, if you put change the material on the side like this, it's going to change the material across the front there. Now you can do um, what we were talking about here is you can uh, in the style panel you can add a runner and set the width to be as wide as your stair, uh, start wide as your treads, and then you can change the material of the runner to be what you want it to be. Okay. So if I go to so I've got the runner set up right here right now so that looks like like that, and then what I can do is I can say let's change the material of the runner. Let's grab my my wood material and apply it there to the runner. And you could okay. do that. Okay. Or just use a polyline, I guess. And yeah, you could use a polyline. That's not kind of that's not necessarily the ideal, but yes, you most certainly could do that as well. Okay. Okay. So, Thank you. Yep, absolutely. 
Kelly, our last question comes from Bobby Collins. Hi, Bobby. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. Um, I am trying to get some um, understep storage. I okay. have um, L-shaped stairs, mm -hmm. um, but it's not in the corner of the um, building. It's in the corner of a wall. And so, like, if you would move that out into the middle of the room and make a wall behind it. Mm -hmm. If you so take if you a, a you're talking if you put some walls here, and then you've got an L-shaped stair, um, something like that, and then you've got some yeah. storage underneath it. Yeah. Okay, so this is what makes it complicated is because um, from just looking at what you drew there, on one part of the stairs, the upper part, um, from the right-hand side, there would be a coat closet that goes through part of the stairway. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as deep as the stairway because the stairs are rather wide. Okay. And but from the other side, there's a closet back there, and so that's part of the closet. So there's, so there's a closet that starts over here, and then another closet under here. Am I understanding that right? If you go back to the um, at the floor plan there. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, that wall on your left there. Mm -hmm. Is actually a closet, and so it uses part of the under stair as a part of its closet. Whereas from the right hand side, there's a coat closet. So okay, so there's, there's a, a wall down the middle of those stairs. So right, some somewhere right in here, and it okay. I, oh, okay. I think it's on each standard. side. Yeah. So you're talking like the divider between those coat closets is right there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm having a lot of trouble with that. Okay, so if we look at that in our camera view now, let me swing around here to the other side. Should, is that kind of what you're thinking of? Uh, yeah. I, um, I so, so what's hap So all all I did there was I I and and correct me if I'm wrong when I did this here. All I did was I drew a wall um, underneath the stairs right through here. And stairs, yeah. uh, walls are going to respect stairs uh, in the sense that if a wall is drawn underneath a stair, it's going to follow the shape of the stair all the way up. Okay. So um, that's what I would, so if I were to do this, if I were to take another wall, maybe kind of come back here with it like this, you could get something that looks, you know, kind of like, kind of like this here. Well, let me do this. Let me make a floor overview that's a little bit easier to see into there but yeah essentially essentially when you draw a wall in um and i could draw another i could draw another wall uh back here to kind of cut to kind of cover yeah, this so i don't too. understand what that wall is right there the, this wall the, right here yeah what's that doing that, that was just me trying to make a, an enclosed space or uh, a room for the closet there okay because the closet is underneath the stairs it's a so it's closet. completely underneath the stairs yeah okay well that's fine so we okay. just grab grab the walls and drag them out like that so let me get rid of this wall here oh gosh chief all right yeah clo a coat closet is a closet under the stairs is simply is just drawing drawing out the walls okay and because and like i said the walls sh the walls should respect the the stair the shape of the stairs at that point so the stairs will sit on top of them as they're going along there so okay so i just do a regular interior wall and uh -huh. i don't have to try to do a pony wall or half wall or anything like that. nope yeah just do a regular wall there if i were to take if i were i'll show you here, here real quick i'm going to turn off the display of my stairs for a second here that's what chief is doing here to the with those walls okay yep okay thank you absolutely well, thank you everyone for coming to our presentation today. I do appreciate that. Uh, thanks for the great questions. There's some really good questions here. Um, wanting to let you guys know that we do have several other training resources available here. We've got these free webinars that we've been doing. We also have uh, some virtual training seminars. Uh, our next uh, kitchen, bath, and interiors class uh, starts here in uh, on May 12th in about two weeks. Um, you can sign up for that on our website at chiefarchitect.com. We also have our on-demand training classes, and I mentioned earlier, we also have one-on-one -on -one training sessions here. 
Uh, and you can find all that information on our website at chiefarchitect.com. If you go uh, to our website, chiefarchitect.com, under User Center and go to Events, Trade Shows, and Training, we have information about our upcoming classes, our on-demand webinars that are available for you to purchase, or the introductory class that's available for free, as well as information for our upcoming uh, Thursday webinars that we do here. So uh, next week, we'll do, be doing stairs and ramps for exteriors and decks. Uh, you can sign up for that uh, now if you guys want to go ahead and do that. Uh, and again, as I mentioned here, we will be sending out a recording of this here in the next few days for you guys to have for yourselves to review uh, in the future and watch and, and go from there. So thank you again for a wonderful uh, presentation. I hope everybody has a great rest of the day and uh, take care. Thanks again very much.